The Mamluks. This country in EE4 is the second most powerful at the start of the game, with its development only being dwarfed by Ming. Personally over time, I've always felt though that they've never really been considered as overpowered in game, and they usually get stomped on by the Ottomans. A nation actually less powerful than the Mamluks at the start of the game. The Mamluks also have a force limit of 45,000 and have a relatively wealthy trade node giving them lots of ducats. This brings us on to why I believe the Mamluks out of all the EE4 nations are the biggest failures in EE4, due to which the scale of their collapse is crazy. The funny thing is, the speed at which they declined was much faster historically than can what actually be achieved in EE4, and usually it's the other way around. Even though the Mamluks have the oldest rule in the game, who is 72 years of age, he can still not prevent the collapse of his country, and probably needs to be put into a retirement home early. In today's video therefore, I want to dive into the Mamluks history and discover why they get beaten up so badly in game, despite being so powerful. Also, we are trying to get to 75,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so why not consider subscribing and help us out? Our story as to why the Mamluks collapses begins in 1382, around 60 years before the start date of EE4. Historians believe this marked the Circassian era of the Mamluk period, and it's separated from the much more successful era under a Turkish ethnicity. Before this period, the Mamluks had been relatively successful, and it was a state created and ruled by people of slave origin. The Mamluks were successful at kicking out the Crusaders, becoming within the Islamic culture, the economic, cultural and artistic centre of the Arabic world. Their prosperity was partly generated through east-west trade in silk and spices that had to pass through the Mamluks territory. So why did they begin to fall after 1382? Well, things took a turn for worse, both internally and externally, and four reasons have stood out to me. Firstly, foreign invasions became more common, some notable attacks came from Timur the Lame, devastating the eastern Mediterranean. Timur never controlled or entered Egypt. However, the Mamluks had lost a big portion of their land in Syria, and had lost their reputation and dignity as military strength. Perhaps this would hurt them later on. Secondly, famine alongside with the Black Death took a hold of the country, causing a decrease in the population and economic decline, with the Black Death wiping out a third of the Egyptian population. As you can imagine, agricultural production drastically declined, and the leadership of the Mamluks could not deal with it sufficiently, since they taxed the urbanisation centres more significantly, which as you can imagine angered the people. Thirdly, the political system, implemented by the Circassian dynasty, had been a factor in the decline. You see, given the change in ethnic origin of the dynasty, going from Turkish to Circassian, it led to this new dynasty not following a tradition of hereditary succession, instead proposing an elective individual. This as you can imagine, resulted in a perpetual change in leadership, and 23 sultans came to power in a period of 135 years. This is a serious problem because every leadership change led to a struggle of power, and the institution created internal instability, with many political factions killing each other to gain power. You can see the Ottomans preventing this by killing off all spare heirs to prevent pretender rebels rising up. Another foolish policy under the Mamluk dynasty is that ethnicity took preference over competence. Therefore, this policy led to a dip in quality of leadership. Finally, I want to talk about the loss of dominance in trade, with Portugal competing with them, and this meant the Mamluk's trade value declined. This was partly aided by other factors such as population loss and political incompetence. But ultimately, it was clear the Mamluks just simply weren't able to recognise where they were going wrong. Despite all the reasons for decline, the Mamluks were still powerful, and that is why in EE4 they are shown this way at the start of the game. We now go to the EE4 start date, and discuss how the Mamluks lost absolutely everything in less than a century. In EU4, the Ottomans almost always expand rapidly, and this is true historically, with them taking Constantinople in 1453, and having very successful military campaigns in both the Balkans and Anatolia. Over the decades therefore, 
The relationship between the Mamluks and the Ottomans grows more intense, and the Ottomans aspired to control the holy cities of Islam, which was under Mamluk control. Although there are few states between the great powers, which we see in game as Dolkadir, Karaman, and Akhenulu, the Ottoman ruler at the time, Mehmed II, planned to campaign against the Mamluks, although he didn't during his lifetime, but his successor planned to carry out the Ottoman dream. And between 1485 and 1491, the Ottoman leader Bayezid attacked the Mamluks a number of times. However, it was with no success and it led to a stalemate. The Ottomans were able to prevail against the Mamluks at sea, but on land the Mamluks successfully resisted the Ottomans. The Mamluks had good defensive positions with a string of fortresses and used superior military tactics despite the Ottoman army being stronger. Bayezid was also not present, leading to a lack of leadership in the Ottoman army. After this, the great powers for a time remained unwilling to attack one another, but a few years later, with the Portuguese able to get spice from India, this drastically reduced the Mamluk income, and the Ottomans saw this as an opportunity to attack the Mamluks while they are weak. In 1516, the Ottomans and Mamluks were at war again, with the Mamluk leader marching north with lots of music. I guess he thought this would be a walk in the park. They met at the Battle of Marj Dabik. As the battle commenced, the Mamluk Sultan was betrayed by his generals, leading to a decisive victory for the Ottomans. The Egyptian Sultan was killed on the battlefield, leading to widespread panic throughout the Mamluk territories. The Ottomans then marched south, taking the whole of Syria after a single battle. Despite the Mamluks electing a new sultan, Tumun Bey II, the administration was inefficient and could not gather a good enough army to attack the Ottomans with, being defeated a second time. Tumun Bey was offered Ottoman vassalage, but he rejected it and had the envoys killed. Perhaps he regretted this later. Tumun Bey gathered up what troops he had and marched to face the Ottomans at the Battle of Ridania. This was a devastating defeat, and although the Ottomans lost the commander, they again marched on. Tumun Bey put up resistance for a bit of time, but it was futile and his head was cut off when they eventually captured him. He then was hung outside the wall of a city. This led to a complete capitulation of the Mamluks, with the governors and the Egyptian ruling class accepting the new Ottoman ruler, Selim, and the Mamluk territories were incorporated into the Ottoman Empire. The conquest of the Mamluks was the largest military venture any Ottoman Sultan had ever attempted, and it made the Ottoman Empire extremely wealthy. In a very short period of time, Selim doubled the size of the Ottoman Empire, something that didn't happen very often. I think personally, the Mamluks, although had a number of external factors at play, as to why they weren't able to put up a good defence against the Ottomans, it was ultimately down to the complete incompetence of the leaders at the top, with countless miscalculations time after time. Even when the Mamluks lost the first battle, the new Sultan's ego wouldn't allow him to become a vassal of the Ottoman Empire to save him from losing everything. The Mamluks clearly didn't play it smart, and that's why I think they are ultimately very incompetent at this time. In EE4, it's impossible for the Ottomans to take the whole of the Mamluk territory in three years, although I'd love to see an EE4 player prove me wrong. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this video explains as to why the Mamluks get so easily destroyed by the Ottomans in EE4. But do you guys think Paradox needs to add flavour so that the Ottomans can take the Mamluks more easily? Let me know in the comments. I'll see you next time anyway. Goodbye for now.